Hi there, Simon from SimonWoods.com. Uh, now, uh, April the 17th is International Malbec Day. Not quite sure who designated it International Malbec Day, but uh, I think 2013 is the third year that uh, uh, it has been being celebrated. Uh, so in, in celebration, I have got uh, eight Malbecs in front of me, seven of them from Argentina, but I'm kicking off with one from Cahors, Chateau de Chambert Malbec. Uh, actually, they, they don't make all that much of a play of the word Cahors on the label. Are they a bit embarrassed about it? Should they be? Let's have a taste and see. Well it's got some of the uh, violet scented um, plum and dark loganberry rather than blackberry flavours that I, I want in Malbec. Also it's got a sense of earthiness and um, this is one of the oldest wines here. I think this is, I'm, I'm doing them in roughly alcohol order so that, the reason I put that first, yeah, it, it is one of the oldest but um, uh, it's the lowest alcohol. It's still 13.5%. Uh, but I'm getting this quite mature, uh, juicy, lithe fruit uh, and a little bit of smokiness. It's, it's, it says on the back label it's had a, a year in barrique. Uh, it smells like it's probably new barrel, but uh, it doesn't smell like it's going to be overwooded by any means. Juicy, plummy, a bit chocolatey. Um, and yes, this framework of tannin from oak and, and also tannin from, uh, uh, from the grapes in the first place. Um, uh, I, compared with the cow that was being made 20 years ago, it's a much more refined, uh, silky wine. Than, it's still got a bit of grunt and uh, uh, rustic grip about it, but it's good rustic rather than um, a bucolic rustic, rusticity. Uh, I like that, nice start. Let's see how we get on with Argentina. Um, so um, let's get on to Ant, the Ant Hill Mob. Altos, Altos Las Hormigas. Uh, Hormigas means ants. Uh, Malbec Classico 2012 uh, from Mendoza. Weighing in at 14%. It's four and a half years younger than the previous one. Um, uh, and still, it's, it's interesting. It's got, it's got that really, really fresh, crunchy fruit. Black currants here, maybe, rather than the, uh, the, the plummy edge of the, of the first one. But it's still got the fragrance, and it's still got a little touch of earthiness. And I look at the colour of it, and it feels like they've tried to make uh, a red wine rather than a black wine, which I always like to see. Bit of toastiness. I'm not sure whether it's been uh, in a barrel. Maybe it has, because I'm just getting a little touch of uh, toastiness that could be oak. Um, but it's this joyous fruit that's the main event and uh, keeps you coming back, keeps you going, I quite like that. Um, so um, fascinating contrast between those two. Four and a half years difference, but, but uh, both yummy. Let's see whether Pablo y Walter Malbec is yummy. Um, I'm not sure. Who, I think this is a wine that's been uh, bottled over here on the behest of a UK importer. Why have I got it after the first one? Well, I think it's a half a degree higher in alcohol or something like that. So we go from 14 to 14 and a half percent here. Now this also smells juicy, young and uh, and vigorous. Maybe not as fine boned and fragrant as the previous one. Doesn't feel like again. Doesn't feel like they've gone over the top. And again, they've made red wine rather than deep, dark, manly but uh, overbearing wine. Um, it smells like it's going to be ever so slightly on the jammy side, but um, not too jammy. Let's see. Good but a step down. Um, it, yes, as I was suspecting, it's just this rounder, plusher fruit, but hasn't got that spiky, lively fragrance that, uh, uh, that the Altos Los Hormigas has got. So, uh, quite nice wine, but um, not as nice as the previous one. Uh, let's move on to La Flor uh, from um, Polenta Wines, Bodega La Flor Polenta. I think it's called Bodega Polenta, and this is their wine, wine called La Flor. It's a bit confusing from the label. Anyway, just let's dig in and see where we get to. Blackberry jam, again, the fragrant edge, um, and uh, there's a juiciness here. Um, it feels like it's not, maybe not as, um, uh, as crisp, if that's the right word to use for the Altos Los Hormigas. Feels like it's going to be a bit fleshier, half a percent more alcohol, so should be a bit fleshier. Uh, but no, it feels like the fruit here is a bit fresher than uh, in Pablo Iwalta. Almost reminds me of uh, Cote de Rhone, that good Cote de Rhone with its uh, uh, slightly stalky, spicy characters. Uh, this bold plum and berry fruit. And um, yeah, this earthy finish. Um, really nice wine. And um, really nice contrast between that and, and Altos Los Hormigas. So it's, uh, uh, both on that young, crunchy side. This one maybe has got a little bit more gloss on it. On it. The other one uh, maybe a little bit more freshness. So uh, 
Horses for Courses. I like them both, I think, as much as each other. Uh, let's well, move on to a slightly older wine, only a year older, uh, from, uh, this is Punto Final uh, 2011, uh, from uh, Bodega Renaissance. Touches of vanilla and spice here, and something really quite exotic, almost sandalwood-like. Uh, there's the uh, the berry fruit. It's a year older than the uh, the, the previous three, so um, it, the fruit's not quite as um, uh, not quite as juicy and perky, uh, but it still feels like it's got some freshness there. And uh, again, it doesn't look like they've uh, done uh, over the, gone over the top in, in in terms of trying to make a wine to impress, rather than one that will actually end up being drunk. And it's okay. Um, I uh, that uh, that uh, that fragrant sandalwood edge, uh, rather than the violet that I was getting in the uh, in, in some of the best of the previous one. That uh, that persists, and then there's a touch of vanilla, a bit of uh, toffee there. Um, Fruit-wise, it's lost a little bit of the freshness that uh, that was still in the 2012s. Uh, I like it, uh, but I think if I and I think if I'd had it without having the, the previous, uh, well, certainly some of the previous ones, uh, I would probably be enjoying it more. As it is. It's okay, uh, no complaints, but it uh, feels like a bit of a step down, and certainly it's a step down in bottle height. So uh, um, let's see whether, as we go up again in bottle height, whether we uh, restore normality and quality. Uh, for we are on, are on um, Colomy, uh, 2010 Estate Malbec. Now, all I think the uh, all si other six of the Argentinians uh, are from Mendoza. Uh, this is from uh, Salta which is two provinces further north, uh, but uh, this is a particular place called the uh, Val Calchaki, which is one of the highest vineyards uh, in the world. There is, uh, uh, there's these guys and there's, uh, there's uh, some people who, uh, they, well, the owner is a guy called Donald Hess. He bought it off uh, the Davalos brothers, uh, and thinking he was buying the highest vineyards in the world, and then apparently one of the Davalos said, actually, we've got one that's just a little bit higher. So I think Colomay then built, planted one a little bit higher, and I, so I don't know who's got the highest vineyard in the world at the moment. I'm, I'm sure I re remember, isn't, hasn't someone in Bolivia got some high vineyards as well? Anyway, I better shut up, shut up and taste the wine. Slightly rustic feel here. I don't know whether it's a, a wood thing or an ever so slight cork thing, but there is a um, just a slight earthy dankness here. I got earthiness in some of the other ones, but here I'm just wondering whether it's a barrel or a cork thing. Um, but the fruit also feels uh, plusher. Um, and um, yeah, it feels like it's, it's, it's got ripe, it feels like the, the, it, it's had a bit more heat on it. So there's a, a rounder, fuller, broader, uh, broader both of sh shoulder and of waistline here. Um, it smells, uh, smells interesting, uh, and, but I don't know whether I'm going to prefer some of the younger, fresher ones. Let's see. Big, full, earthy wine, and I think the earthiness is that, it's, uh, that I'm getting, it's the wine, not the bottle, I think the bottle's actually quite smart. Um, uh, it is it is a fuller, fleshier style than the uh, uh, than the, the the wines that have gone before, and uh, yeah, you can taste the warmth, you can taste the intensity, um, and. Um, it's, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's quite a nice warm spring day here, uh, and um, the, the temperature, uh, people think, oh yeah, as, as red wines get bigger and bigger, serve them warmer and warmer. I'd almost say the opposite for uh, some of the more robust New World wines. I find that at higher temperatures, uh, you're getting a lot of the, the heat really comes through, and the, uh, if there's any hint of jamminess in the, in the wine, then that comes through more strongly. Bit of, maybe even a quarter of an hour in the fridge, and... Uh, uh, something like that would be, uh, 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 yeah, it's certainly looking fresher. Not that it's not looking fresh now, but uh, I think it would be of benefit to a wine like that. Yeah, decant it and put it in the fridge, if that makes sense. Um, so I like it at the moment. I think that, um, I don't know, the... the um, uh, the, uh, the the good 2012s, I think of them as uh, uh, almost like slightly not outdoorsy type of wines, but uh, uh, good juicy gluggers. Here it feels like there's a little bit more uh, earthiness and complexity. Sometimes you want the freshness, sometimes you want something that's a little bit more sit back and contemplate. So I might sit back and contemplate that later after having glugged some of the others. Um, wine number seven. We, I think this is the highest alcohol, 15.5% uh, for Familia Bianchi Malbec. Um, and uh, we're in Mendoza, back in Mendoza here, but uh, towards the south of Mendoza. Uh, so uh, let's give it a whirl. And this is a big, rich, juicy, 
uh, again, the, those plums, berries, the damsons, the, that little, little edge of damson skin as well. Um, it's um, maybe I'm what well, I can't fault it for its intensity, certainly from the aromas. Maybe I miss uh, a little bit more, a few more of the grace notes. Well, that's not a shy fawn of a wine, um, and it's big, rich, rounded, chocolatey. It's got this uh, this juicy, plummy berry, um, and uh, this licorice. Uh, all those things for me point maybe to somewhere that is just a little bit too warm, or maybe they picked everything that little bit too late. I get what I call the skinniness, so I get damson skins, black currant skins, almost a sign that the grapes started to shrivel up on the vine, losing a bit of freshness. Um, and um, so um, I, I, I miss I miss a little bit of the, the, the violets, the earthiness that was in uh, some of the uh, the younger, fresher wines. And um, I, it's a style that I know lots of people love. Um, so I'm not going to um, I'm, I'm not going to be too heavy uh, heavy handed with uh, with the criticism. But I, it's not a style of wine that I want to particularly uh, encourage. And I, I always think about I, how much of that could I drink? Uh, not. I, I'd, I think I'd struggle to uh, to do half a glass. And I was talking about the Colomé and thing, uh, saying of that as a wine I'd serve on the cool side. I'd almost serve that even a little bit cooler, maybe half an hour in the fridge. Um, and it, of course it's going to warm up and as it warms up, uh, well at the cool temperatures maybe you, you will get some of that freshness coming through, but as it warms up then uh, those plumminess, uh, th those plummy notes will come through. And I suppose when the licorice and the, the volatile alcoholic bits start coming through, that's a sign that maybe you need to stick it back in the fridge. Hey, um, final wine, uh, Trapiche. Uh, so this is um, Trapiche uh, 2008 and uh, Vigna Federico Filani. Uh, each year, uh, since I don't know 2003, something like that. Um, Trapiche. They, they get Trapiche gets big. It's part of uh, Peña Flor, Argentina's largest wine company. And each year uh, they get grapes from loads and loads of growers. And to encourage them, uh, they started uh, picking three of the best and doing a single vineyard bottling of their wines. This is one of them. And it's funny, it's two years older than the previous one, but it almost seems to have a bit more fruit freshness about it. Um, and it's got, it has got some of the violets, berries, um, and some of, some of the earthiness, but there's also this, I was talking about iron rich character, I can't remember which one of the ones it, 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 it was in earlier, but there's a real sense of um, earthiness from the soil uh, coming through in here. Um, so it smells good, um, taste it. I'm really good it is too um, and uh, so there's it's proud and plummy but uh, it's got this backbone that that is uh, keeping it all uh, uh, yeah keeping it all from going too wobbly so there's the earthy minerality and there's that uh, that fragrance too and there's a freshness and um, despite the 15% alcohol um, if I have an ever so slight carp I get just a little touch of Britannomyces maybe drying the finish out a touch but it is really a minor minor carp. Um, so um, I've enjoyed these. Um, I've enjoyed some of them more than others and I found that there were some that were maybe winter wines. I would say that uh, uh, the higher alcohol wines at this end are more, more the winter wines. Uh, the ones, the younger, these 2012, I'd be digging into those uh, uh, with barbecues and stuff like that and uh, or asados if you don't want to get into true uh, Argentinian mode. Uh, but the main thing is that when April the 17th comes, because I have to confess as I film this, it is not April the 17th, uh, uh, as long as you're drinking some Malbec and having it with some appropriate, hearty, but fragrant food, then I'll be happy. See you soon.